Namaste everyone. So we have been discussing the coexistence of self and body yesterday. And before that, we discussed about human goal. We made an appraisal of the current state and looked at the program ahead. With that, we had taken this assignment to ensure the human goal of happiness and prosperity in every individual, in the family, in society, and nature and existence. We need to start from ourselves. Throughout the day today, notice how often you are only expecting a change in things, people, situations, etc. outside, and how often you are paying attention to yourself and your role in or participation also. Then reflect on your needs and activities as a human being, need of the self for happiness, a continuous need, and need of the body for physical facility, which is a temporary need. Note that the need of the self, that is consciousness for happiness, has to do with feelings within the self, while the need of the body, a material unit for physical facility, has to do with the material. Also reflect on the activities of the self, for example, the imagination, activity of desire associated with feeling, thought, and expectation, which are continuous, while the activities of the body are temporary. Throughout the day to day, check if this seems true for you as a human being. Anything you could conclude or deduce from this, note your observations in your journal. We'll discuss it now. So if you look at assignment one, it says that to fulfill the human goal, are we able to see that we have to start from ourselves? So we have to see whether we are expecting this goal to be fulfilled from outside, or am I clear of my role and I'm working within? Me. When expecting this goal to be fulfilled from outside, then I'm again expecting others to have definite conduct. I'm expecting others to make the environment conducive for a humane society. You are expecting others to work for carelessness, isn't it? We are only expecting a change in things outside. But if I'm able to contemplate on this human goal, then I look for change within. Before expecting that everybody needs to have right understanding, I'll ask myself whether I have the right understanding. We keep on blaming people in the society. Oh, this is the age when nobody is having the right understanding. Nobody is having different conduct. Nobody is trustworthy. Nobody is uh, prosperous. Everybody is exploitative. We keep on saying all these things. And we want change. And we want change in the society. Presently, elections are also going on. So. Many times we do keep on talking about what others are doing, what the government should do, how the people should do, what the society should do. But seldom we are observant of what I am doing. So if there is no harmony in the society, or at least the society is not working as per human goal, what am I doing? Am I clear of the human goal? Am I working to ensure it, the fulfillment part in me? Am I able to see my role in the society and how much time and effort I am making to fulfill the human goal in the society. So this is one important part. Starting from oneself, looking for transformation within first because based on personal transformation only societal transformation may take place. And then we talked about the coexistence of self and body. So we need to be clear about the needs of the self and needs of the body. We can see that the needs of the self are continuous they are fulfilled by right understanding, right feeling, and they are all qualitative. We can see that the needs of the body are temporary. They are fulfilled by physiochemical things, and they are all quantitative, isn't it? We can also see the activities in the self are continuous. Activities in the body are temporary. We can also look at the response. We have not taken it as an assignment. We'll talk about it further today. We can also look at the response. So we need to have a closer look. We have discussed this content in the workshop. We have discussed it in meetings. Uh, but here in our morning session, we are trying to directly observe. In fact, we'll spend a lot of time observing the activities of the self and the body. In exercise one, primarily we are observing the activities of the self. In exercise two, you are observing the activities in the body and the transaction between the self and the body. And in this sense, we are also trying to observe the Whole nature because I am the consciousness, the body is material, and the nature is made up of only two kinds of units consciousness and material. So, studying the self and the body, I am able to study the whole of nature. That's why it is so important. In fact, 
I am there in this nature, body is there in this nature, and the two are there in space. So just, just paying attention to oneself, I can understand the whole existence. That kind of potential is there in me. Gradually, as we are able to observe, as we are able to contemplate, as gradually the higher level activities are awakened, we become more and more clear of this. And then we are able to see how the source of happiness is innate, not outside. What I borrow from outside is only an information, which may or may not make me happy. It is only an information. So the change has to take place within. And the change within will percolate in the society also and will fulfill the human goal. And we can all see, like one personal transformation can make a substantial change in the culture of the society. One personal transformation. One person getting transformed within. One person being able to see the reality as it is in completeness can transform the age of the society. Isn't it? The whole culture, the civilization, that kind of potential is there in us. So nice. If any reflection is there, you may raise your hand. We can take some reflection from batch 10 now. Dr. Anand Kumar Burma. Yes. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste. I'm not thinking about the right understanding, right feeling, and uh, self happiness. Only for working for body. So, uh, unknowingly, even though they are having more and more, again and again, they are working for that. More time they are spending for that. More energy they are spending for that. And worrying about the things which are not having. So, uh, continuously, happiness is uh, lost because of In so entire society, the people are uh, living like this. Uh, so, he has to understand, realize, and transform for body, what are the things required? Very limited only. Food, food, shelter, dust. These are all uh, basic things everyone is having mostly. But even though they are having much more, but they are running behind money, they are not spending time for uh, relationships and all the other things. So happiness is uh, losing in the society. So more transformation is required. But uh, through UHP only, most of the people, even myself also, uh, transformed and now only, then this is required in the entire society. So this is my reflection. Certainly we are. Nice. Yeah. So people are busy earning as much as possible because they are not able to make out the needs correctly. They are trying to fetch happiness through physical facilities. That is the problem. Yeah. In fact, even in the society as a culture, if this message somewhat gets down uh, among the people, that happiness is not to be ensured through physical facilities. Relationship mm -hmm. is more more important than physical facilities. And the happiness is going to be ensured through right understanding, right feeling only. Even if this masses gets widespread, it will make a lot of change in the society. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier days, uh, when my grandfather days, he was producing uh, rice. For, uh, that rice, if he stored, it will be useful for uh, three years nearly. Even though next year any calamity or floods or anything, whatever it may be, he never feel uh, sad. Uh, enjoyed their life uh, with more peace of mind. Even myself also going and uh, swimming in the wells and uh, roaming in agricultural fields and more happiness with very, very less facility. That is electricity also not there those days, long back. So even though not, facilities are not there, we, we enjoyed our life very, very happily. Nowadays, we have everything, but uh, that much happiness is not there. Why? Because micro families, then mobile phones, people are uh, living with their mobile phones, not with the people. So these are the yes. things that is coming into this. Certainly, Bhaiya. So this is, of course, a serious issue. And because of this, we are able to see so many issues coming up in the society, isn't it? Because of this, the human goal is not getting fulfilled. So yes, we have to work for it. And we can see that it can be ensured only through education. When we have human education in place, being uh, implemented effectively among all sections of society, for all children, then it will this, make, this will make a substantial change in society. Prashanti. Ji, Ji Bhaiya, Namaste. Namaste Sabhi Ko. Bhaiya, while discussing, I'm talking about the difference between self and body, uh, qualitative and quantitative. 
So as far as the example is concerned, when quantity is taken as a need of the uh, body, if I require three, four chapatis, so this is the temporary. Uh, so since it is not continuous for the time being, so it is called as temporary. But while uh, considering the need of the self, it is the um, respect. So uh, I was confused while my presentation and Rajvijay and yourself have cleared it, but uh, still it is a question for me. Uh, if I consider that chapati to be burnt, which are given to me, then I consider it as a quantitative. And um, I have not um, uh, <laughs> considered it, or I considered this as a quality. Quali I considered it instead of quantitative quality, means uh, the type of chapati or the quality of the chapati. But I think it should not be considered. Quantitative means either it is there or not. So please, Bhaiya, clarify this issue. I think it is not clear to me. So okay, Bhaiya. Yeah. So we talked about it yesterday. Let me repeat that. That will make it Ji. more clear. Ji. So when I look at the needs of the self, Ji. I can see that if something is naturally acceptable to me, I want it every moment. And if something is not acceptable to me naturally, I do not want it any moment. This is being qualitative. For example, trust, I want every moment. Mistrust, for no moment I want it. Never. Respect, every moment. Disrespect, never. So like this, happiness, every moment. Unhappiness, never. So this is being qualitative. When you talk about the needs of the body, like food, growth or shelter, then we can see that it is something quantifiable. And when we talk about quality, <clears throat> of physical facilities. It also has to do with the quantity of the ingredients. For example, chapati being burned or chapati not being burned. Now you can see the quantity of chapati which got burned. Okay, as it goes up, then it, the, it loses the quality. Chapati with ghee and chapati without ghee. So the quantity of ghee is zero. So it is of one quality. The quantity of ghee is up to a certain mark. It is of good quality, as we say. Beyond that mark, again, it will not be called as a good quality. It may cause so many problems like cholesterol and health issues. So it is something to do with the quantity again. So one thing that we need to understand that when we are talking about quality for physical facilities, it is something to do with the quantity of ingredients. But for the self, we are not saying quality. We are saying qualitative. And qualitative means that if I want it, I want it every moment. If I do not want it, I do not want it any moment. It means my, my last query. Uh, uh, if it is means qualitative means what? If it requires, if it is required by the self, though the chapati is burnt, I will not see its quality. I will take it because it is the qualitative requirement of the self. Is it really, I am not seeing that again. See, first of all, chapati is not need of the self. The need of the self is happiness. Ji, ji, ji. Chapati need of the body. Ji, and the quality of chapati hai na, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is dependent on the quantity of ingredients. Ji. For example, you have maybe wheat flour of which you have made chapati. You can Ji. also have multi-grain flour of which you Ji. make the chapati. Now, mm -hmm. you can say that a multi-grain flour chapati is better than a wheat chapati. Fine. But here you are again talking about the quantity of ingredients. When we are saying qualitative, it means that I, if I want it, I want it every moment. If I do not want it, I do not want it any moment. So, for example, the feeling of trust, respect. Now, you'll see that when we say that the chapati is burnt or chapati doesn't have ghee, all those things. Then if the chapati is not burnt at all, we may again you know, call it a poor quality because it is not properly cooked, let's say. So here again, it is pertaining to the quantity of ingredients. So you have to understand the difference between needs of the self, needs of the body, and the meaning of these two words, qualitative and quality. Ji, ji, ji. <laughs> clear, clear now. <laughs> Means it will be never burnt or with ghee. It will be related to body only, not with the self. Physical facility is not related to the self. It is related to the body. Ji, ji. I am associating some meaning that is a different thing. <laughs> but think over it. You know? So yes. whether chapati is burnt or not, or it has ghee or not, it is something to do with the needs of the body, not yes. the self. Yes. Okay, thank you. 
रविकांत जी भैया द प्रेजेंट डिस्कशन व्हिच इज गोइंग ऑन विथ रिगार्ड टू क्वालिटेटिव एंड क्वांटिटेटिव टू माय माइंड इट कम्स दैट इट इज द मेजरमेंट आई मीन इफ द नीड्स कैन बी मेजर मेजर्ड इन एनी फॉर्म ऑफ यूनिट मे बी वेट डिस्टेंस काउंटेबल सो दैट काउंटेबिलिटी मैटर्स इफ आई कैन काउंट द नंबर ऑफ यूनिट्स इन एनी नॉर्म ऑफ मेजरमेंट then it can be quantity and if it is not possible for me to count it in any uh, norm of measurement that is qualitative so for example uh, the way i understand is that uh, trust you cannot say it is one trust two trust or one kg trust or two kg trust suppose i yes. uh, suppose i am thinking of uh, say how many clothes i have so i can say i have got 10 sets of clothes or uh, but uh, in this fashion we cannot uh, measure the uh, trust love and all that so that is how the needs can be differentiated with regard to countability of the units so the countability basically i'll say quantifiability see counting is one part of quantifying weighing could be something else so you can quantify it you can look at the quantity so yeah, better yeah. to use the word quantity in place of count i have just last week uh, conducted a small session on this the members and table uh, means it was a parivar sabha for for example i have got say Uh, now uh, four brothers and two sisters so we all family members almost 20 30 people are are sitting uh, every sunday and uh, this was the issue which was raised with regard to how to differentiate uh, the needs of self and body and there i used uh, this term thank you bhai yes so is that part clear yeah bhai yeah i mean uh, this the way i understood i think uh, uh, is, is it so okay? in place of saying counting we can call it quantity that is better a yeah, quantity i mean anything which is quantitative has to relate with quantifiability or quantity yes so we yeah, we can go to the content now so we can see that human being is cognizant of self and body where self is consciousness body is material we discussed about the need and the activity of the self and the body we can also see the response of the self and the body so just try to see whatever is happening in the body you know, is it only recognizing and fulfilling or something else and whatever is happening in me is recognizing and fulfilling taking place by itself or there is some assuming behind it find it out look at it and who is going to know the self or the body so presently also when we are discussing what are we trying to do we are trying to know we are trying to know the reality as it is isn't it and this is there in the self not the body the body is just helping as an instrument in this process now you can see we have so much of dialogue we ask so many so many questions we keep on interacting keep on interacting we keep on investigating we keep on exploring now who is doing all this it is not the body it is only the self the body is working as an instrument the health of the body makes it a better instrument if the health is not okay then the instrument doesn't work properly if the health is good then it works properly but it is only working as an instrument the exploration is taking place within me the investigation is taking place within me the understanding is taking place within me the assuming is taking place within me the conditionings are there in me isn't it the craving for sensation is there in me not the body okay this four activities of knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling so knowing means to see the reality as it is in its completeness by direct observation but trying to know the reality what am i what relations it means what the other things in the nature are how am i related to all this what is going to happen of me in future where did i come from where will i go all those things any kind of query that is there in me i try to resolve so we are in the process of knowing seeing the reality as it is isn't it but before we come to know we assume or we accept so there is some acceptance of the reality i have to live every moment so i accept certain things so even now if, if <clears throat> i do not know that self and body are two different things so i accept that yes body is there and i do assume that i am also there now whether i and body are same or different i am not clear so knowing is not ensured but i do assume that yes i am there i do assume that the body is there i do assume that relationship is there i do assume that other human beings are there i do assume that i have a role to play in the relationship with them and with that only we recognize and fulfill so assuming is acceptance of the reality it would be based on knowing or may not be based on knowing so acceptance can be on the basis of knowing or even without knowing recognizing is to identify the relationship with human being and the rest of nature so based on our assuming we recognize the relationship 
So if I assume that self and body are the same, I recognize the relationship with my body in one manner. If I assume that the two are different, I assume my relationship with the body in some other manner, isn't it? If I assume the relationship with the human being based on trust, then I recognize accordingly. If based on mistrust, I recognize again accordingly. So my recognizing is based on assuming because I am recognizing the relationship and on the base is, the basis of that is assuming. And the way I recognize, I fulfill the relationship with human being and the rest of nature. So within me, I recognize and within me, I fulfill also. And that fulfillment could be within me. It can also be in coexistence of self and body. It can also be in my expression outside. So the fulfillment can have various levels. In my imagination, for example, somebody is use some profane language for me. I assume that this person is my enemy. He wants to hurt me every time. And then how do I fulfill? Maybe by abusing within me only. You know, within me, I am saying something to the other. I am getting angry, saying so many things within me. I am fulfilling within me only. I am not transmitting the information to the body. The other possibility is that when the other person is gone, then I start doing something, saying something loudly, isn't it? Then I am using my body also. While using the body, the message is not going to the other person. This is another possibility. The third possibility is that while the other person is using some preferred language, I also start using the preferred language in the same manner in front of the other. Now this is another level of fulfillment. So firstly, only I was fulfilling within me. In the next stage, I am fulfilling, utilizing my body. In the third stage, I am also expressing it outside. So the other person is also able to hear it. Then there could be some more levels, isn't it? I collect some more people to put this person down because he has been using profane language. So I call 10 people and see that, see this person has you know, been misbehaving with me and why you all are not doing anything. So let us all join together to put him down, to punish him. Now I'm expressing in front of so many people. Again, I'm fulfilling. So fulfilling means I'm going accordingly. The relationship that I have assumed and recognized I am going accordingly. So these are activities within me. Now, if one thing to be made out is that when I look at the activities within me, if there is something else than this, so can all the activities within me be classified into these four activities or something else is also there? Dr. Anand Kumar? Yes, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I want to know the difference between acceptance and natural acceptance. Uh, as per the, the definition, assumption is acceptance. But assumption, it may be either it may be correct or it may be wrong. So what is the difference between natural acceptance and that? Yeah, so acceptance is assuming. Natural acceptance is my innate faculty, which leads to knowing. Uh, does it change from person to person by a natural acceptance? No, yeah. It is uh, so, universal. Yeah, it is universal. Come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, yeah acceptance, acceptance will be varied, varied from person to person. Yes, it will vary from person to person. So as I go from assuming to knowing, how do I awaken this knowing? By paying attention to my natural acceptance. So reality is already reflected in me. Whenever I pay attention, I look at the reality as my natural acceptance. And the more I'm able to look at it clearly, it awakens my higher level activities and I come to know yeah. that yes, this is it. Yeah, that is by verification. Yeah, that is the verification. Nice, Bhaiya. Devi Prasanji. Bhaiya, Namaste. I have namaste. one clarification, sir. That what is completeness? That uh, I want to know. Completeness means the entirety, the whole existence. Now, when you talk about one unit, knowing some reality in completeness, this is one thing. And knowing the completeness is something more than that. So when I say knowing something in completeness, so you can see that there are five dimensions of a unit. We are not discussing it here. There are five dimensions of a unit, form, property, natural characteristics, innateness, and submergence. So when I go to know a reality in its completeness, then I know the dimension of the reality, which is something innate, invariant, and universal. That is the natural characteristics, the innateness, and the submergence. So knowing a reality in completeness means knowing these three. So knowing the natural characteristic, knowing the innateness, and knowing the submergence. Is that fine, Vya? Okay. Yes, fine. So knowing the natural characteristic means being able to contemplate on the participation of the unit in the larger order. 
knowing the innateness means understanding the harmony innate harmony in that unit and knowing the submergence means realizing the coexistence so that is knowing a reality in completeness yeah relate ji saying is explain reflection as you said reality is reflected in me in my natural acceptance yes so as you go along we'll see that space is transparent and through space the natural characteristic the innateness and the submergence is reflected in me whenever i pay attention to it i get some hint from within that is my natural acceptance so the reality the part of the reality which is invariant which is universal which is innate is already reflected in me that's how to see the reality in completeness i do not have to run helter skelter i do not have to run here and there i do not have to look outside i have to look within the reality and if you look at the complete reality most of it is outside i am a very small unit in this whole existence but to know the reality outside i just have to look inside and that is the good part of it so to know the entire existence i do not have to keep running from one point to another in the existence no i have to look within because this whole reality is reflected in me it's only that i have to pay attention and that is reflected in me through space which is transparent so nice if you see i can see the whole reality the whole existence which is outside me most of it just by paying attention within me and if i try to look outside i do not pay attention within i am not able to know the reality i can only make out the form and property of the reality i cannot know the reality when i look outside while well, the reality is there outside me and when i look within i can know the reality in its completeness that's how we have been saying that we have to go inside in fact when there was a pandemic there was a common saying if you cannot go outside go inside and many of the people did also and that has been quite helping the society because this pandemic gave us a chance to go inside people had been running outside for the sake of happiness they were not even aware that whatever they are doing outside is only the expression part the happiness is inside not outside when they started going inside then that helped them to a large extent and we can see during the pandemic <clears throat> you know when we got connected through these online workshops it helped us a lot it helped the families also a lot yeah lipi go swami ji sir good morning uh, so sir it is knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling so all these four attributes are sir uh, for everybody this is uh, naturally accepted and universal isn't it sir these are activities of the self we are calling them as response mm. so this is universal that every self is going to have only these four kinds of activity this is universal but the content of assuming is not universal the content of recognizing and fulfilling is not universal okay okay sir so every self has the activity of thought this is universal but the content of thought is not universal and sir um, knowing i mean we should go from knowing to assuming recognizing and fulfilling so this is the ascending order isn't it sir of our uh, means self whatever our self Uh, is doing activities in any particular situation then these four attributes are in proper order or sir what in how these things happen in our mind yeah so presently knowing is not activated it is somewhat dormant so we are only working in the domain of assuming recognizing and fulfilling so one important task is to develop assuming also because the assuming also not is not fully developed so we have to develop assuming also now as i develop the assuming then i also start paying attention to my natural acceptance mm-hmm. and then i start knowing so i move from assuming to knowing and once the knowing is complete assuming is completely guided by knowing i am saying we have to develop the assuming because presently we are not able to even image what happiness is what prosperity is what relationship is what human goal is so at the level of assuming also i have to work a lot so that i develop acceptance for the reality and then i can know the reality by paying attention to my natural acceptance yes yes sir. okay sir thank you tara bhi hai jo question when you say reality of family society and nature is it possible to see within as you stated for coexistence yes so family essentially means relationship society also so it is relationship between human being and the rest of nature and when we say nature then nature means we are talking about all the units in the nature so the content to know is not the family or society or nature the content to know is the relationship harmony and coexistence 
and family is an expression of it different orders in the nature are expression of it and the essence of all this expression is coexistence so the coexistence is expressing it as harmony among the four orders coexistence is expressing it as relationship between different units so this all is a expression of coexistence so the content of knowing is not family or society basically it is relationship harmony coexistence and going by that we have different levels of living as individual as family as society or nature ji ji bhaiya thank you so much nice bhaiya prakant ji ha namaste bhaiya namaste bhaiya bhaiya mera question ye hai related to observation within that's i think uh, we are hearing some terms like samadhi and nirvikalpa samadhi bhaiya iske bare mein thoda bol sakte hai can you tell something about uh, that samadhi and the nirvikalpa samadhi yes bhaiya so basically this knowing is related to samadhi so what happens like in the tradition this word samadhi has been used this knowing is not accomplished within uh, let's say a very short span of time all of a sudden let's say it has stages so i am able to contemplate the participation to some extent i am able to understand the harmony to some extent then that extent grows and finally i am able to see the whole reality as it is i am able to realize the coexistence so this awakening of the higher level activities of contemplation understanding and realization has been associated to samadhi so in say nirvikalp samadhi it means i do not have any alternative i am able to see the complete reality as it is without any doubt without any confusion before that we have savikalp samadhi when we are not able to see the entirety and we may have some alter thoughts so ultimately like so various words have been used like this word or this set of words had been used in yoga darshan some places you will find the word turi have been used some places some other word being used so the essence is i need to see the reality as it is in its completeness now during this process of development we can have various stages those stages have been named differently in different traditions yeah bhaiya yeah, that's one more question is that's uh, when a person reaches to samadhi and uh, he lives long in the samadhi only and when he in not able to come out of this samadhi out and whether it is helpful for the society if a person is in samadhi only so that's what so i'm saying the basic issue is to ensure knowing now if the person is not able to come out not able to participate then what we can say is it samadhi or something else that also has to be looked into so if i'm just sitting by myself closing my eyes least movement in the body then what is my state i have to make out for myself so i have to see the end outcome the end outcome would be i am able to realize the whole existence as coexistence and i am able to participate in the universal human order fine bhaiya yeah bhaiya yeah yeah, yeah yeah arun kumar ji हाँ भैया नमस्ते मानव सेल्फ और बॉडी के सहस्तित्व के रूप में है और बॉडी और सेल्फ भी जो ट्रांजेक्शन होता है वो इन्फॉर्मेशन के रूप में होता है इन्फॉर्मेशन सेंसेस के द्वारा हमारे ब्रेन तक पहुंचती है और सेल्फ उसको रीड करता है आप अभी जब हम तक ये विषय वस्तु पहुंचा रहे हो तो जो भी आप हमको पहुँचा रहे हो तो जो हमारी कंसियसनेस है वो जो सोर्स ऑफ साउंड में है जो आप जो विषय वस्तु आप हम तक पहुँचा रहे हो और जो मैं वहां तक पहुंच रहा हूँ तो मुझे ये फील हो रहा है कि मैं इसमें ब्रेन का प्रयोग नहीं कर रहा हूँ बस की मेरी कंसियसनेस वहाँ है जहाँ से साउंड आ रहा है मोबाइल के द्वारा तो तो क्या ये अलग बात नहीं है कि हम यहाँ ब्रेन से भी एक्सेस नहीं कर रहे हम सीधा सीधा एक्सेस कर रहे हैं हम किससे एक्सेस नहीं कर रहे हैं आवाज थोड़ी झिलमिला गई ओके ओके आ, हम जो आप विषय वस्तु हम तक पहुँचा रहे हैं ये 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 मोबाइल के द्वारा हम तक पहुँच रही है जो भी आप कह रहे हैं शब्द के रूप में और आप और हमें ये बताया गया कि जो शब्दों तक पहुंचता है सेल्फ वो ब्रेन के द्वारा पहुंचता है कंसियसनेस ब्रेन के द्वारा पहुंचता है अब मुझे ये ये लग रहा है कि मैं डायरेक्ट अप्रोच कर रहा हूँ जहां से साउंड आ रहा है स्पीकर तक मैं इसमें ब्रेन का भी प्रयोग नहीं कर रहा हूँ मतलब हमारी हमारी जो कंसियसनेस है वो सोर्स ऑफ साउंड है स्पीकर तक है ब्रेन का यहाँ यूज नहीं है मुझे ऐसा फील हो रहा है क्या हमें इस ये किस तरह का क्या हमें कन्फ्यूजन है या ये रियलिटी है you can make it out i'll put the question in english so bhaiya is saying that when i am transacting information with the body then does brain have a role to play or is it without any participation of the brain so this is something again subject to our own uh, observation we can directly observe it so while observing you can see that i am exchanging information with the body through the brain only because brain is the part of the body 
हुज फॉर्मेशन डिफॉर्मेशन इज इन सच अ वे दैट आई कैन इंटरेक्ट विद द ब्रेन सो लाइक व्हाट एवर आई इमेजिन इज वेरी सटल एंड दिस हैज टू गो एज अ ग्रॉस फॉर्म इन माय एक्सप्रेशन थ्रू द बॉडी सो ब्रेन हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ कैपेबिलिटी टू डू दिस एक्टिविटी similarly the sensation that is coming from the body is again at a very gross level and it has to be converted into a subtle form in which the brain has a role to play so this is of course taking place through the brain but yes i am related to the rest of the body also so it is a possibility that there are certain activities which need not be through the brain but this is something that we can observe so at a rational level you can see when the body is not there and still i am able to interact with the rest of nature or the other self then how is it happening so brain is something which is helping as an instrument a nice instrument but the interaction can take place otherwise also there is a possibility okay bhaiya okay okay thank you but presently when we are there with the body we are doing it through the brain itself suchi smita ji bhaiya namaste i would like to share my observation uh, as we are talking about the acceptance knowing and assuming like last uh, three days i was unable to attend the session uh, due to like some uh, personal work and as well as uh, like unable to manage the time and these three days uh, was like an eye opening for me uh, like in the morning i usually wake up to attend this session only earlier i was having a different time schedule and what i realized yesterday like uh, as we are talking about knowing assuming recognizing and fulfilling i have understood that this session is something it like a charger like last 3 days i was having the same time table uh, only one thing was skipped that was attending the session but i was doing the another thing uh, in the same way and what i observed like when uh, the end of the day i was coming back i was feeling very much exhausted and like uh, uh, when i was just about to sleep that time uh, usually i do a little bit med- meditation i was thinking that something or some part is missing from my daily schedule and some kind of unfulfilled or like how do i express like i was feeling that something is missing or due to which i was not feeling uh, charged rather i was feeling very much exhausted and yesterday when i come uh, came back and according to the first means earlier session as we are talking that how much time we are spending ourselves and after uh, like from that session and all now i try to spend some me time so when i was spending me time then i realized that as i was not attending the morning session and due to which somehow i was feeling like drained and which is causing uh, exhaustion and today when i was like waking up i was i was very much enthusiastic to attend the session and now i am feeling charged automatically so it is all about the happiness which is depend on us and it's coming from like uh, accepting the reality and the ri- reality which is based on the right understanding so for me like this session is the example or maybe it is uh, for other person it may t- maybe something else but yes once we will get to know the reality which is making ourselves completeness i can means uh, what i am trying to say that we can fulfill uh, the way happiness can be derived thank you viya nice nice didi in fact these morning sessions help us wake up the body and awaken the self <laughs> exactly 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 um, yeah and as i was unable to attend the three days because uh, last three days i was coming quite late Uh, around 10 or 9:30 and due to which uh, like i was unable to wake up early and unable to manage the time and uh, it was like yesterday's observation i'm doing everything but i'm not feeling enthusiastic and then i realized that what what is actually missing from my daily schedule that i am feeling so much exhausted then i realize only this part is missing so that is the thing and another observation uh, i would like to mention quickly like the transformation is happening which i can see or i can feel like before uh, first may there was a different time table as i mentioned 
and after that i am spending time with my family members earlier when family members asked i am staying away from my family members so whenever they used to call i feel irritated that like that i am having um, work and all i have um, different task also when they would like to talk for a long time i used to say see i am busy um, can we discuss this thing later on or like i am um, all right anything else you would like to know so the response was something like that and they always having a complaint that uh, you don't have any time for the family members you are staying away we are concerned but every time whenever we call uh, yes sir right now i'm little bit busy uh, can we talk later can we uh, may i call you later so i was having such kind of response another thing is that i'm having a small garden although it was not prepared by me in my university like we have green practices and due to which they provide uh, plants and which i am having at my place as well i uh, like i can't remember that when last time i have uh, like uh, watering the plants always uh, my maid used to do that thing but uh, nowadays i do it and i get a different kind of happiness like uh, means i'm feeling like they are like the students or they are like my kids uh, and uh, means the approaches of mine that has been also changed and that i can feel or realize also so thanks to the morning session this is really an i opening and it's creating a transformation in myself and which i can understand not uh, like truly but gradually i am getting and i'm trying to incorporate all those things nice nice didi thank you so if you are only working in the domain of assuming recognizing and fulfilling and the knowing is not ensured then we are in problems all the problems in our life are owing to the lack of knowing and only going by assuming so when it is there then we are preconditioned and that is assuming without knowing so we assume certain things i assume certain thing about my spouse i assume certain thing about my in laws i assume certain thing about the facilities in the house i assume something about my job i assume something about my boss i assume something about my neighbor i assume something about the plants and trees i assume something about food for clothes for shelter because ultimately without assuming i cannot recognize so i have to assume something so knowing is not and should and i am going on assuming isn't it and then i get deeply conditioned by assuming repeatedly i get deeply conditioned so preconditioning is going to assuming the same way again and again right now we'll see that to begin with my assuming may change from time to time but some part of the assuming is there which gets somewhat deeply rooted so i go by that but again that is also not definite and universal so that gets questioned also at times so the assumptions keep changing and when this happens then you can see that the conduct is indefinite somebody said some sweet words to me oh he is such a nice fellow you know and the same person when he did not behave properly this person is a nuisance you know throw him away i don't want to see him any moment so our assumption about a person a thing some activity the society the nature all these things keeps on changing because ultimately knowing is not ensured i am only going by assuming so the conduct is indefinite you can see that within a single day if you are getting one kind of reaction or response from the other you have one kind of assumption about the other and a different kind of reaction response is coming then you have another kind of assumption about the other does it happen not just try to imagine about your spouse and he or she behaves according to you you have one kind of assumption for example it is said that if the husband remembers the birthday of the wife he becomes the best husband of the world and if he forgets then he becomes the worst husband of the world <laughs> is it there so assumptions keep on changing isn't it if he brings a nice gift that you just said once and he remembered it when he gets the salary he brings for you then you feel that he is so nice you know so affectionate so loving but if that kind of response is not there then we have a different kind of feeling so assumptions keep on changing and our conduct is also changing accordingly so if you are only going by assuming recognizing and fulfilling you are in the domain of problem we are misguided by preconditions and our assumptions keep changing and the conduct is indifferent so we are dependent on something outside for our conduct this is being enslaved for tantra when the knowing is ensured then we are resolved then we are at peace with ourselves 
we are in harmony within we are in the state of bliss within happy all the time happiness becomes my innate nature and then we can see that the knowing is ensured through self verification and how we do that so by referring to the natural acceptance and by validating in our living so now still we are assuming but this is now guided by knowing so i am able to now see the reality as it is and whatever i assume is guided by that seeing and then my conduct is definite there is no fluctuation in my feelings there is no contradiction in my thoughts okay there is no testing of unhappiness in within there is no expression outside for disharmony i always am having the feeling of relationship feeling of harmony i am able to see the coexistence with the entire existence so now my conduct is definite and this is the role of education sanskar essentially education means this education means this this is the role of education sanskar and let me tell you one thing that if we are clear about this and we try to work it out for our children so to begin with we may have some kind of apprehension that my child may not have a good career or may not have a successful life as others are having but if i am able to see this reality clearly we can see that with less investment in terms of physical facility we are able to develop our children as a better human being with definite conduct and in the long run if you see the person is prosperous the person is happy the person's conduct with us is more fulfilling the person becomes a pillar of human society so to begin with we may have some apprehensions when we are going to make this kind of program for the children but you can see that in the long run this is going to deliver isn't it because this is essentially education presently we are investing so much of money for educating our children and we are always uh, having a doubt what will happen when he enters or she enters the teenage we don't know and you know? they are not going to listen to us they are not going to be guided by us they are going to fight with us if we do not go by their wishes and what will happen after their marriage till them are we confident that they will stay with us they will take care of us isn't it so even though we are doing a lot in the name of education for our children we are having all these doubts and you can see with these doubts we are not happy so we are investing ourselves for our children at the same time doubting them at the same time feeling so apprehensive about them and ultimately we are at a loss just like much ado about nothing we did so much but we could not develop our children in true sense of the word so there is something to really think about very serious issue yeah so now it is time so let us now close it so thank you all